Du, 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 du. They're almost indestructible, except they do have one kryptonite, scissors. This haul is very near and dear to me because it is my first clothing haul in over two years. And if you stick around until the very end, you'll get to see what my Burberry and Dior are. Two years ago, I decided to switch to only buying sustainable clothing items. And for me, I'm not quite at the part where everything I'm buying is maybe ethical yet, but I am at the part of my life now where I am no longer buying plastic clothing from fast fashion and other brands that produce non-biodegradable. So all the clothing that you see in this video, excluding shoes and accessories, are all made biodegradable natural fibers or thrift. blazer and some of your favorite jeans as well as a nice bag with this and you're set to go out on the town. You look chic but casual at the same time. And then items number two and three include two silk camis. They're all 100% mulberry grade silk. And I've been debating with myself whether or not I should keep the white or beige of these 100% silk camis. Because at the same point, the beige is so soft is pretty neutral. The white is also pretty soft, but the beige is softer. I'm just trying to replace one of my current satin camis that I tried to fix and I'm not a seamstress, so I kind of butchered it. So a long time coming and rightfully so, I think I should replace it. Leave me down your thoughts down in the comments down below. Which do you think I should keep, the beige or the white? I've been looking on Instagram as well as Pinterest for ideas on which would be better and they're both neutral colors, but I feel like maybe the white would be just a little bit more versatile because it's a very, very neutral color. It's like, it's the neutralist of all the neutral colors is black and white range. And these were, I'm ashamed to say, from Shein because I've tried to, in these past two years, phase out fast fashion or their ethical and environmental concerns. But these were 100% silk, so I didn't see any environmental harm in getting them. But a part of me is still guilty because these were so cheap. They were only $25 each, when normally silk camis cost $50 to $100 in that range. And these were just a quarter of the price, but in order to make them that cheap, they must have paid their workers so little in order to produce it. And so I'm just debating with myself if I should keep these. But I know that if I was to keep them, I would be happy with the deal that I scored on these. There's this Brandy Melville top, which I recently got as well. Seriously, guys, you don't know how excited I've been to make this unboxing and try on. I've been waiting for like weeks to wear some of these items and try them on. Some of these items shown in this video, I have not even worn my hand to the gods because I've been waiting for every single piece to come in. Some of them have been coming from various retailers like Lily Silk, Silk Maison, Poshmark, Depop. Purchased them at different. I bought this cardigan specifically for a thrift flip. I bought it off of Poshmark for only $7, not including the $7 shipping fee that was tacked on, which is a bummer. But I negotiated and offered with the seller for $7 and I managed to get this, which is a steal price. And I thought for this thrift flip, if I wasn't going to be successful with the thrift flip that I had planned for it, then I could at least wear it as it is because it is very cute and of the trend right now. I've been seeing a lot of people on Instagram wear a short sleeve or cropped cardigan as a shirt and it gives things a little bit more of a preppy, cute vibe rather than a regular plain t-shirt. And this has a nice little v-neck to show some sexy collarbones because we all know that collarbones are sexy. So I've been really looking forward to this and 
decided to jump the boat. I've been gravitating towards a lot of white items lately. I don't know why. There's also another item that was supposed to arrive today that is a white skirt, skater skirt, as well as the white t-shirt and this, and the silk cami that were all white. So I have like four items that I've gotten recently that were all white. I think I'm gravitating towards white because white is a neutral color, but it also really goes well with pastels, which if you follow me on Instagram, I'll put it up here in the left corner of this video, you'll see that I love pastel colors as much as neutral colors, and white goes really well with light blues, light pinks, light purples, as well as the other neutral color spectrum, as it goes well with beige. I ordered two because I could not decide, because I wanted to replace one of my bow tie shirts with the long tie neck at the front. Sort of been trudging along all these years wearing it as it is, but it looks horrible because sometimes the neckline will flip out and then exposing the seams and the horrible stitching that I've done with it. So I've decided maybe it was time to upgrade. There's two subtle characteristics that are different in that this one has a more tapered arm sleeve and is a lot more slim fitting profile with a wider ribbon. This is the width of the ribbon compared to the other one here, which has a puffier sleeve as well as a thinner ribbon. The buttons are also different. This one has a silk enclosed button that's a little bit more curved and sticks out more, as well as the other one has a plain old button. They come with replacement buttons, which is really nice. I'm thinking if I do keep these, as well as another of the silk item that I'm going to show in this video, I will give you guys a review on the two brands butting head. But this video is not sponsored by Lily Silk, even though I know a lot of people on YouTube have been sponsored by them. I'm not one of those people. I bought this with my cold hard cash. <laughs> I'm not biased by them, so this is a true reaction and impressions video. Oh, and there's like a little button closure on both of them too. Button up closure. And the buttons are actually concealed behind an extra flap. You can see the extra flap there that covers the button. This is an H&M blazer that I thrifted from Depop. The seller was very kind and she included additional gifts within the item. Um, she included a ring as well as a little cute sticker with the item when I purchased it. And although I've never purchased anything personally from H&M before, I do like the fit of this blazer. It's a very thick blazer. It's heavy and hefty, hefty, hefty. When I unboxed it, for the first time, it was like the weight of a MacBook Pro. It was so heavy. It was a brick. <laughs> it was so hefty. But I am kind of impressed that for a cheap fast fashion brand, this blazer does have thin shoulder pads, which is better than none. Shoulder pads are usually better than none. And it has real pockets. And it has almost like this sort of tweed-like texture to the Glen plaid, um, makes it a little bit bumpy. And initially I thought it was just pilling. Did I just get duped and buy a horrible quality blazer that is pilling? But then I realized it was like all over the blazer. So it was probably just a texture, which I was not expecting from the photos because it didn't ever mention it. But it is a very nice thick blazer for winter and fall, which is what I was wanting it to be for to replace one of my current plaid blazers, which is this one. I just preferred something a little bit more of a structured collar like this one. This one has a peak collar. In terms of menswear, peak collar refers to the sh shape of the label where it peaks up, hence the name peak collar. So I was specifically searching preferably for a collar like that or a notched collar. So I'm sure everyone has heard or seen of this particular brand on Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, whatever your socials are, because I don't judge, of the one, the only brand. You guessed it. Can you guess? Silk Maison. I got this slip dress from them. It is actually softer than the silk from Lily Silk, this fabric. I don't know if it's because Lily Silk is dyeing their fabric white and that's why it's stiffer and not as soft as this brown one because of the Shein camis. The white one was not as soft as the beige colored one. So I'm wondering if if you just make it white, it's 
less soft, but silk is naturally white, so I don't understand what that has to do with anything. I'm not a silk expert, I don't spin cocoons or raise silkworms, but it arrived a little bit wrinkled. It's alright, it doesn't look too bad on me. The main reason I bought it was because I was hoping to use the top part of the slip dress as a cami if I wore something over the skirt part of it or if I wore something on top over the cami part of it and just used the silk slip part at the bottom, the skirt part, as part of the outfit. And it's really easy to just use your dresses that way. Our next very special item is this pair of shorts. As you can see, it has this beautiful bow tie detail in the front. I am not a professional gift wrapper, so don't expect me to tie your bows for you perfectly. But I've tried my best here with this floppy bow. The nice thing about these pants, uh, aka shirt, is that they stretch in the back. There's an elastic, so they fit. And they have pockets! None of that fake crap. And prancing around like a cute British schoolyard boy. Everyone's been looking preppy lately because Gossip Girl reboot 2.0 and this gives me major preppy vibes. Da -da -da -da. In addition to everything else that I've talked about today with thrifting, this was also the Rifted. I bought it off of Vestier Collective, which is an online platform that is globally recognized as a platform where you can sell your clothing as well as shoes and apparel and the infamous designer bags. I was able to negotiate a very cheap price on it. I have a very bad experience with Vestier Collective, which is why I don't really want to buy items from them anymore. I've had two really bad experiences buying pre-loved items from Vestier Collective that it's kind of turned me off from buying pre-loved items because of the wear that was shown on the items that was never listed by the owners in the listings even though it went through quality control and they never picked it up either. But that's a story time that I can leave for another video. But I trusted Vestier Collective enough to purchase this skirt because normally Burberry skirts brand new cost, gosh, I looked it up and it was around 800 to 1000 or over $1,000 for a Burberry skirt that was brand new. And this, it has like pleated detail as well as these shiny metal finish, finish buttons. This was only like $200 and it's slightly loose at the waist so I'll make my own alterations to it. I'm noticing that everything that I've bought in this haul so far has been neutral colors and I can see this serving me well for a really long time. If not, then I can easily resell this to someone else and not feel like I made a huge loss. Burberry makes really nice plaid patterned apparel pieces, like their scarf in particular, but also these skirts are really cute. Like a plaid skirt, how classic and traditional is that? It's not gonna go out of style, so good investment. For jewelry, I also purchased an Ana Luisa item. Ooh, fancy. Snaps. I do like that Ana Luisa is sustainable. At least, um, they ship sustainably and everything else. Their items are made sustainably with gold. Look at this. It's so pretty. Little flowers. I only have one bracelet. This one that you see. I bought it off of Amazon a while ago and it's gold plated on these little beads and the gold plating never actually has worn off because the bigger beads protect it from being in contact with any other surfaces. From Abbott Atelier, which is artisan jewelry. I got jewelry, this set of items, and everything from them is gold plated, which I'm not a huge fan of because personally, when I buy things, I like them to be gold pieces, even if it's a low. I exactly like that they came in little plastic bags all smooshed together in this little pouch which was very economic for shipping but I don't like it because if this is gold plating the pieces being smooshed together in this little plastic bag makes me worry that they'll rub together as they travel or get moved around or jostled meaning the gold plated will jostle against each other and get worn off faster. It's called the Baroque choker necklace. These pearls kind of move along on this jump ring that is like woven through this little rhinestone piece. Their earrings, which this is what they look like. They have little pearls on this who also freely move, as well as these ear cuffs. This little flower piece sits on the ear, and this little chain dangles from the ear, which I don't know if you can see. It has this little metal bar that goes through your ear hole, 
and it helps to stay in your ear so that the ear cuff doesn't fall off. I've had cases where my ear cuff has fallen off because it would not stay on. This last bag here is just a little bag of earring backings, which is so nice because everyone loses their earring backings. I don't know anyone who doesn't. It, luckily I have a backup stash, but Abbott Atelier just gave me more, but still. Um, these are some really pretty bow ones, which is so cute. I believe this one is made with cubic zirconia too, so it's not actually fake rhinestones. So from Lily Silk, we have also these items as well, which include these five hair ties. And I know there's only four right now that I'm showing because I, surprise, surprise, took one of them out and decided to wear it because I was running low on hair scrunchies and that's the reason why I bought these. <laughs> which includes this one, which you see here, that has this beautiful pattern on this side, as well as on the back side. On this side, you can see it has this beautiful pink and green pattern. The colors are just exquisite. This is one of my most favorite shades of green, and it's, a, it's almost like a viridian bluish green with this beautiful, almost like air balloon pattern on this side. It's just really beautiful. I just love this totally so much. The, and then on the back side, there's this beautiful colorway of the dark night sky. Ooh, and actually, if I line them up this way, you can see that it's well, almost perfectly symmetrical. They were both $30 each. If you've been following me, you know that I have a Hermes Vintage Kelly, which I could also tie these on. Also, from the brand Annette, which I bought those Tillys from, they gave a little pretty gift and it is super wide. Like, this is my hand. This is a really nice quality scarf ring because it's metal. And I'm assuming it is silk because the other items from the shop that I've seen that are scarves and such have been silk. I personally am not really a big fan of using wide scarves. I mainly buy twillies and thin scarves to put on my bag handles because I like to dress up my bag, but otherwise I don't really use them for anything much 
other than that, even though I know there's a million ways, I'm just too lazy <laughs> to figure out what to do with them most of the time. Because if you guys would like to get this from me, contact me and slide into my DMs. Or I'll just probably post it for sale on my Depop, Mercari, or Poshmark, which I'll also link in the description down below. This was the other item that I got. I had an unboxing video. I'll link it in the description bar below as well as at the end of this video for you to see. The Dior Slink Box are also a houndstooth pattern. It is this, the center one is full, very silk, center is very smooth and satiny. And then on this white part, there's little diagonal throughout the entire length of the twilly, which is half plain black. And one of which says Christian Dior. I also purchased a pair of tights from Sheertex itself. Sheertex is a brand that creates these superhuman strength duh, 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 tights. They're almost indestructible, except they do have one kryptonite, scissors. Everything has its own weakness, like Superman. But I like these, and I purchased a regular pair, and now I've come back to purchase this pair because it has the dots in it. Many times when you put on tights and you're so excited to wear them, you try to put them on, you snag them, and then you just feel like you wasted a bunch of money, and the brand itself is Sheertex. If you think we're done with our hosiery, we're not there yet. Black knee-high socks, which I can use them in the winter as well as just wear them standalone. And our last and final item is the last, but not least, tweed set suit. <laughs> the description of this item when I bought it off of Depop was Gossip Girl inspired set and looks what and looks just like Chanel's vintage tweed sets was what it said in the description. So I'm very happy with this because I get the look while paying pennies for it compared to what the actual Chanel would be costing me, which would be an arm and a lung. And maybe one or two of my kidneys. I did pay about $100 for this entire set, so I was expecting something a little bit better quality. And in the very least, I can just say that at least it's better than the Shein one that I purchased and returned a while ago because it was coming apart and the threads were loosening. This one has beautiful details on it, such as these pearl, fake pearl buttons. I have worn it out once, and I enjoyed wearing it because I was able to pair it with my classic flap in gray, as you can see down there, as well as the recent unboxing I did of my Chanel sling bags that my boyfriend got me for my birthday. I'll link the video in the description or in an end card or at the end of this. I especially love these details on it, where there's black and white are interwoven together in a sort of braid pattern. I hope you enjoyed that video. Thanks for watching up to this point. If you enjoyed this video, go down and leave a like as well as subscribe because you know you wanna. And if you subscribe, you'll get to see more videos like this on a weekly basis. You love mature style and analysis as much as we do here on AKA CSA, then go down, like, and subscribe to get your weekly CSA PSA out of the press, if you'd like to consider supporting me as a small content creator, then I'll also link my Patreon down below as well as my Instagram. And until next time, I'll see you guys all later.